everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. Now, <clears throat> there's been so much seriousness in the last couple weeks, I thought it would be fun just to have a fun video today. So we're going to discuss a few of the not-so-official crochet terms, and some of these are knitting terms as well. <clears throat> I will apologize, I'm still having a little bit of a scratchy throat, but I am feeling so much better. <clears throat> that flu knocked me off my feet for about three weeks. I hope you don't get it. <laughs> so, um, anywho, we're going to have us uh, some fun. I've got some new yarns to talk about. I've got some new patterns to talk about. Some new videos to talk about. And just a lot of fun. We're going to talk again about our giveaway for January. And then I, I do want to discuss one serious topic, and then we'll get into all the other fun stuff. Good morning. I see some of you popping in, Tina and Carol and Marlene and Judy. Thank you for popping in. And like I was saying, we're going to have some fun today. It's just been a little bit too serious out there lately. But one thing I wanted to discuss, I've been getting a lot of questions about what you can do for the uh, fires or to help the people in Australia and the animals. And I, unfortunately, I got a lot of um, spam email and messages asking for money that were not uh, legitimate places to give. <clears throat> and so I really want to encourage you to be careful. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that take advantage of these things, and they, and they know that a lot of us have really tender hearts, and we want to help, and we want to give. <clears throat> and so I really encourage you to really investigate before you give any money at all to, these, to this cause, or any cause, actually. We just have to really be careful, because there are a lot of people out there that take advantage and want to spam honest people all right so just be real careful with that I was really kind of shocked I when I opened up a couple of these emails because they really sound official but then if you check into it and um, a good clue is to see who the email is coming from and check it out and make sure that it is a legitimate place to give money especially if they're asking for money now it is my understanding <clears throat> that they're asking us knitters and crocheters not to send any more things because they've got more than they need and unfortunately a lot of these precious animals um, they're not making it and so we really need to pray for Australia this is so heartbreaking um, so many people and animals that are that are displaced and so I, that's why you know there's so much seriousness out there I try really hard to keep our live videos and all my videos positive, but sometimes we do need to discuss, you know, those kinds of things. <clears throat> Mostly because I want to keep you protected. I don't want you to give to things that are not real. I don't want you to, to make things that are just going to be thrown in the trash. And so really check it out. There are some good sources out there. And my best advice is to Google it, read, 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 check it out, check it out, check it out, and make sure that it is a legitimate place to give money or items, all right? I did, I was told, like I said, that they're asking us not to send any more things um, because they're just, you know, people love to give. It's just in our hearts. And so they're just overwhelmed with things, all right? So that's, that's my take on that. And again... When I do a live video, it's just what I've learned and my, um, my thoughts, my ideas, and <clears throat> yours might be different, basically. <laughs> so it's just my advice, that's all. All right, so 
Let's get back into saying hello to everybody. There's Karen and Teresa. Good morning, Kimberly, Rita, Judy, Dawn, Tracy, Vicki, Sarah. Love your name. Although I spell mine differently. I don't have an H on mine. <laughs> Susan. <clears throat> Yes, uh, Susan's talking about her sister making hammock, hammocks for the baby kangaroos for the Joeys. That is such a sad, sad thing. I mean, they're losing their mamas and they're just babies. So just make sure you're giving to a legitimate place that really needs them. Really check it out, okay? Ari, Cheryl, Melissa. There's Kimberly again. And Susan. All right. <clears throat> now, one thing I wanted to do is I need to make sure that everybody knows that we film this video live. I guess it's called live streaming to the Posh Pooch Designs Facebook page. Let me click to my computer. All right. And now we're going to click over to Facebook. Okay, and now I'm clicking over to my page. Now, when I film live, this is the page that it's going to be on. Posh Pooch Designs. Here's my little symbol. And if you'll notice right here, it says live. If you want to see the live video, just click that live button. And something you probably don't know is you do not have to be on Facebook at all to watch it live. You can go on Google and click Posh Pooch Designs. The Facebook page will come up and you can still watch it live even if you don't have a Facebook account. Now we're still working with something that will be compatible with my broadcasting program because I do use a broadcasting program to do my live streaming and hopefully we can figure all those things out and stream live to both Facebook and YouTube. We're still working on it. We want to get it right before we do it. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. All right, now let's get into some fun stuff. We don't want to stay serious. We want to have some fun. So I, uh, it was kind of a funny thing that happened. Someone had contacted me and they said, what is H-O-T-H? And, and I had to laugh because um, Hoth, of course, is... A planet on Star Wars right <laughs> and so I said well you know there is a whole list of fun terms that we as crocheters and some knitters use all right so I'm gonna put this over here I'm gonna go to my top camera and here's a fun list up oh, there's my camera notes <laughs> and on this list you can see there are lots of fun terms Crochet along is C-A-L. Join as you go. Now this one, J-O, I always called it J-Go. For join as you go, that's how you join your squares together. It's also called continuous join. All right, then you have your crojo. And your crojo is your desire to crochet. And a lot of people will state, oh, I've lost my crojo. And that just means they've lost their desire to crochet. And a good way to get your crojo back is just to go into Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's and start looking at all the beautiful colors of yarn. And before you know it, you're going to want to buy some yarn and start crocheting again. This term, yarny, is just relating to yarn. I always say we're going to have some yarny fun. That just means there's going to be yarn in the fun that we're going to do. <laughs> and then, of course, there's your local yarn store, L-Y-S frog <clears throat> that one I get questions about often it just refers to when you're ripping out your mistakes rip 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 ribbit 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 it sounds like a frog so they say we have to I have to, I did too many rows and I have to frog one or I missed a stitch and I have to frog a stitch hot off the hook is hoff there's also an f-o-t-h which is fresh off the hook I didn't add that one in there I forgot about it w-i-p is your work in progress UFO is an unfinished object, and then I put in parentheses project because it's referring to the object as the project. Then we have FO, which is your finished object or project. Your PhD is your project half done. And I don't know about you all, but I have several PhDs. <laughs> 
And then, of course, there's yarn barf, and that's just when you're pulling out the inside of your yarn and a big blob of yarn pops out and it's all over the place and it's a big mess and you have to fix all of that. I really don't mind yarn barf as long as it's not tangled. <laughs> all righty, and then the last one is NCR, not crochet related. And I'll use that occasionally if I am talking about something in the group and I'll say, well, this is not crochet related or NCR, but, <laughs> and then I'll talk about it. You know, it might be knit related or it might, you know, and some of these terms are interchangeable if you're a knitter and, and it, I just thought it'd be a lot of fun to go over those. These are fun. And I get the question all the time, when you're first starting to crochet, how do you begin learning to read a pattern? And I really recommend that you begin by learning the abbreviations. And maybe not these abbreviations, <laughs> although these are fun, but the simple ones like a chain, CH, or single crochet, SC, or double crochet, you know, triple, TR. It's good to learn those abbreviations at first. For a space, we use SP. For a stitch, we use ST. And so, and, and there's a lot of things like that. And every pattern at the beginning has a list of stitches used or stitches in terms or stitches. And they'll have the stitch and the abbreviation. And then underneath that, if a special stitch was used, say a V stitch or a shell stitch, thus it'll have a thing that says special stitches. It'll have shell stitch, the abbreviation, and then what it is. It might be, you know, the shell stitch is three stitches, three double crochet stitched in the same stitch. Or a V stitch, it'll say double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all stitched in the same stitch. <clears throat> v stitches, shell stitches, they all change. Sometimes you have six double crochets. And so it's a good idea when pattern designers are writing patterns to give you a lot of that information. So before you start trying to read the rows, learn that information that's at the top. What does the materials list mean? The skills. And a lot of those things you can Google and find. You can find lists that say, um, what does the materials list mean? Or you can Google, what do all the yarn weights mean? And you can come up with lots of good information. And another place that I like to go is called Crochet for Dummies. And I used to, <laughs> when people would ask me a question and the answer was easier explained on this website than me, I would send them that link and a couple of people were annoyed at me saying, do you think I'm a dummy? I'm like, not at all. I love that website. And the reason that I like the Crochet for Dummies website is it has really good pictures and graphics that help you understand. And <clears throat> I found it probably 10 or 12 years ago. And I don't send it anymore uh, unless I say something like, this is a website that has helped me click this link. And I don't tell them what it is because <laughs> I'm not trying to be insulting at all. I just really like the website and I think it's laid out really well and it's really easy to understand. <gasps> we forgot to click in. I've got my cup here. It says, all I want is to sip my coffee and pet my dog. And that's the way I feel today. <laughs> Everybody, let's clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink, clink. And if you don't know what clinking in is, all it is is we're just saying, hello, I'm here. Clink. <laughs> Kind of like when friends go out to dinner and everybody gets a glass of wine and they clink their glasses or something like that. Although I don't drink wine, but I do drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> Come to think of it, I'm going to have a little sip right now. Now, if you want a list of these not-so-official crochet terms, it is on the blog. And I always put, um, I always write a blog to go along with all my live videos. Underneath the YouTube video there'll be that link and then i also try to put the link on the facebook page as well so if you want this fun little list it'll be there for you <laughs> it's always great to refer to it because sometimes people you know like me we forget we use these things every day and we forget that new crocheters or even people that have been crocheting a long time may not have heard these fun terms okay now you might be wondering why oh it's on this side why well, i have a clip on my shirt I have to tell you the funniest story. <clears throat> Tuesday mornings, I like to get up early, take a shower, you know, be ready. 
And then I get a lot of work done downstairs on my uh, blog and things like that. And then about 8.30, I come back upstairs because I want to have about an hour because I like to make a little video to put on Instagram, you know, the intro video, and then get things ready, make sure I've got everything that I'm going to show you and stuff like that. Well, even though I don't wear my hair real long, I cannot stand my hair on the sides of my face. I have been this way since high school. It's kind of like I was wearing bangs before bangs were popular kind of thing. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> I always wear, it's on the side. I always wear these little clips. I have one up here. And so I was looking all over the place, and I remembered when I was downstairs, I, I always put the clip on my shirt. That way I get it back upstairs. So when I was downstairs, I had taken my hair down to kind of fluff it out so it can dry. Even though my hair is thinning out some, I have very thick hair. Well, <laughs> I was fluffing it out to dry, and I put the clip on my shirt, and... <clears throat> I was looking all over the place upstairs. I have a lot of them. My my daughter's always saying, hey, mom, 80s wants their, their hair clips back. But I still love them. I love using the clips. I have a lot of hair. I can whoop it up there and clip it up. Anyway, I could not find this clip. And I wanted to wear the brown clip. and Or the black. It's Actually, it's, it's a dark brown. It looks black. But anyway, I couldn't find it anywhere. I went ahead and got ready. I used a different clip. This is a lighter brown clip. And I, was, I got everything ready, all the pictures done, and everything, getting ready to start. And I hit that live button, and I looked up at myself, and I saw that clip <laughs> on my shirt. And I thought, I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> this is what happens when you have too many irons in the fire and too many things going <laughs> Oh, I'm such a silly person. Anyway, I love to laugh at myself, and I'm sure you all have done those same things. I remember one time when I used to be a manager at Walmart, My, uh, I would come home. Sometimes you have to work nights to get the modulars reset and stuff. And I came home, and it was like 6 in the morning, and I put my purse in the refrigerator, and I put my keys on the counter. And I could not find my purse to save my life for the longest time. My, my son goes, uh, Mom, did you mean to put your purse by the milk? <laughs> So yeah, I'm kind of forgetful sometimes. <clears throat> okay, moving right along. I want to show you some new things that we did this week. Now, if you'll notice behind me, I have this blanket. And this is our Grantastic Crochet Along squares that we finished. And I love how mine turned out with all the different squares, all the different styles. I did notice, though, if you'll notice, this one looks a little darker right here. Even though I bought the same yarn and the same dye lot, the last skein that I bought, when I had them all together, I couldn't see that, that the uh, dye was different, even though the dye lot numbers were all the same. And so then I realized that one really is just a little bit darker. I don't really mind. I think it's pretty. Anyway, so we did the video on how to do the continuous join or the join as you go. And it's a it's a great way to add and put together a blanket with squares because you do not have to cut it, the yarn I mean. You continuously go. You go around and you do a whole row, then you add the next in, go around to the next row. And I tried to make the video slow and I did a swatch so that you could see how to do it. And I explained all that on the video. There's a blog and a video. And you can find that, of course, in my playlist on YouTube. And we're all finished with the Grantastic Crochet Along. So what that means is we're getting ready to start our 2020 Crochet Along. And <clears throat> uh, we're going to be doing a washcloth or um, washcloth, wash rag, whatever you want to call it. It can be used in the kitchen or on your body. It's up to you. And we're going to do those the third Monday of each month. So that means next Monday, I'm going to release the first pattern. The tests all came back perfect, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But I'm going to, I'm going to warn you, these are not going to be your typical washcloths where they're all rows of single crochets. It's not going to be that at all. And we're going to learn some new techniques and some new stitch patterns. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. It might be a little bit challenging if, if you're a beginner, but I'm going to, uh, the videos, we're going to take our time. We're going to have lots of pictures on the blogs. We're going to take our time. 
because the whole point of doing something like this is so that you can learn some new techniques and some new stitches. And even though we're doing this on washcloths, these can have applications in lots of other ways. And so that's why I wanted to do it this way. And I also wanted to do something that each month was an individual item. <clears throat> Instead of having like with the, what we did the, the Grandtastic crochet along and then the year before we did the, um, where we added a new type of stitch every couple rows to a blanket. That way you don't, you, if, even if you don't begin at the beginning, you can always go back and do those. And those, those videos and patterns will always be there for you. But I wanted it to be indi an individual thing each month. And, I, and also, it takes a lot of work to do a continual thing because um, you've got to make sure everything lines up, all your tests are perfect, and all of that. And so I thought we would do something that was a little less um, big, but still something we, we can learn a lot from. And that's why I wanted to do the washcloth of the month. I already put a blog um, out there that has all the dates on it. Um, of when you're going to need, uh, when, how, how I put this better? Uh, it's going to be the third Monday of each month. I thought something fell. <laughs> Anywho, but, um, so, but sometimes in the month I might have gone to the next Monday or the previous Monday, depending on what happens on that Monday of that month. And so, um, I put a blog out there. If you go to my blog, at the top, you'll see Washcloth of the Month, Crochet Along. You can click that tab, and it has a list of all the dates of when the washcloths will be released. And as they're released, I will add the blog with all the pictures and the written pattern, as well as the video link and the video, like we've done in the past. All right? So, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think we're going to learn a lot as well. All right, now, the other things that we did were, yesterday we did our easy plastic bag keepers, and they're really pretty. They're done with a, with a um, shell stitch, that, and they're done with, I did these with the comfy cotton yarn. This is the fireside, and this is, I think, spring green, and if you don't know what those are, this is what it is. It's the comfy cotton yarn. And it is a cotton blend. And I believe it, I don't think it's 50-50. Let me look on here. Yes, it is. It's 50% cotton and 50% polyester. It is a 50-50. And I like this for these because you're getting a sturdy cotton, but you're also getting a little bit of stretch from that polyester. And <clears throat> this is the, it's called Fireside that I did this one with. And then the other one, I went ahead and left this one up here as well. This is a spring meadow. I said spring green. It's called spring meadow. And this is this one. And it takes about, I want to say three to three and a half ounces, but that seems high. Let me see. I can't remember. Yeah, that's about right because these have seven ounces and you can get two out of there. I think if um, you use that, but you don't have to use that yarn. You can use any cotton and any acrylic that you want. Now, those are considered a three weight, but to me, they're thicker than a three weight. And so the pattern is actually written for a four weight yarn. So you can use any cotton, any acrylic, or any blend that you want to. And if you use a three weight, that's fine. It will work. Just remember, it's going to be just a little bit skinnier and not quite as long. So you may want to do some more rows. It's up to you. <laughs> and I really wanted to get that done. That's something I... Um, <clears throat> they're starting in a lot of states to start charging for your plastic bags. So it's a good idea right now, before that law goes into effect in a lot of places, to go ahead and start gathering up your bags so you can reuse them. The only ones that I really get frustrated with is the Walmart bags, because I think they've been recycled so much that if you put anything very heavy, they start to stretch and tear. So make sure if you're going to use those, you double those up. And of course, use your fabric bags and also use other means for shopping like this great big bag i just absolutely love this bag this is our square granny and we just did this one and <clears throat> the secret is how you keep it nice and sturdy although i used all my all my leftover 
um, bits of cotton yarn and some cotton blends. But the inside is one of these fabric cubes. All right, Put some yarn in there. And <clears throat> this is a nine by nine square. And although the bag itself, once you get it all put together, it, your, your squares are 11 inch squares. And then once you get it all sewed together, after you get your trims and everything on, it measures about 14 by 14. <clears throat> but remember, everybody stitches differently. Some might be a little smaller. Some might be a little bigger. I actually think I could probably get a 12 by 12 inch cube in this bag. I need to weave that in <laughs> because it's so big. But I love this bag, and I love it because it holds a bunch. It really does. And by putting that cube inside, I want to make about four or five of them. And by putting that cube inside that bag, it's not going to roll around the back of your car or your back seat or your trunk. <clears throat> that cube is going to give it extra sturdiness. So you could even use it as a library book bag or anything, although it does make a pretty good yarn bag. <laughs> I think they're great to have uh, sitting next to the couch or wherever you work in your yarn room or something. And then if you want to take your project with you, you can just grab it up because you've got that cube inside and all your things are going to stay inside. Now you can make a liner for it if you want to. Um, it's up to you how you want to use it. You can use it with the cube. You can use it without the cube. I just love the idea of being able to take a bunch of these to the grocery store, you know, putting them in the back of my car and they're not going to roll all over the place. As I have plenty of bags that I use, but my bread gets squished and the eggs slide around, you know, and you can use those other ones as well, but items you don't want to roll around, like your eggs and your bread, are going to stay put in that cube. <clears throat> Let me <clears throat> get a little dry. All right, now the last thing I wanted to show you, I'm going to click back over to this top camera where we had that paper, and you'll notice I've got some yarns here. Well, Hobby Lobby had their sale. We move those out of the way there. And they, every, I think it's every other week, and sometimes it's the third week because it depends on how many of the weeks there are in a month. But anyway, so I went, because I was actually looking for some yarn to make something for my son. <clears throat> and I saw this beautiful yarn. This, let me move those up. This is just their basic. I love this yarn. It's called Print. And then the color is Nova Scotia, uh, Nova Scotia Sky. And I absolutely love these colors. There's dark teal and navy and white and little bits of like a yellowy green in there. And so I have a plan of something I'm going to make with these. And, <clears throat> and when it comes to acrylic yarn, that's just your basic acrylic medium weight number four yarn, this is my favorite yarn. Now, I do use a lot of Red Heart Super Saver. Red Heart with Love. I love Red Heart Soft. Those are all really great yarns also. But I really like this. And when I want to make something from something from Hobby Lobby. I wait till they have their 30% off sale and then I, I look and see, you know, what they have and if I'm going to like it. I just really like this. <clears throat> and it's actually, a, 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 there's a, I have a shawl out there that I'm wanting to update the pattern on and I think this would make just a gorgeous shawl. Hopefully I can get to it this year. Now the other two I bought were these two. <clears throat> this is the Delish Boutique 90 Acrylic 10% Alpaca. It is a number three, and the color is called Pomegranate Pudding. And I really like it because it's got like pinks and just a little bit of gray. This is actually a real light pink and a light gray. Then it goes a darker gray, darker pink, and it just swirls around. These colors on this scheme, um, a lot of the cakes have abrupt color changes. This does not. It just smooths right in to the next color. To me, this reminds me of like an ice cream, the way it's all smoothed in. This, like I said, it's 10% alpaca and 90% acrylic. And wouldn't this make just a gorgeous wrap shawl or something or, or a shawl, um, a scarf wrap? I've got an idea of something I want to do for Valentine's Day with this one. I think it would be perfect. 
All right, then I found this one. And this is a number one weight. And I love these colors. It's a real light teal. It goes to a green, an orange, a pink, and a purple. And it's 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And you're going to find a lot where they're, they're combining cottons and acrylic because it's a great marriage. Cottons absorb water. They're sturdy. And acrylics give you just a little bit of stretch. So by combining that, you're getting the best of both worlds. <clears throat> it's called Rainbow Rhapsody Gerber Daisy Gar Gerbera. Gerbera. <laughs> I'm going to call that Gerber <laughs> Daisy Garden. So, and I think it has a separate color. No, it is. It's the same. <clears throat> now, I only bought one because I think I'm going to make... I have a bathing suit cover-up that I made last year for Red Heart. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do the video with this because I think this would just be gorgeous for a bathing suit cover-up. Anyway, those are the yarns I wanted to show you. Some Just some fun finds that I have. And I'm on a hunt for one other yarn. I noticed that uh, Walmart has these big rolls. It's called a blanket in a roll, I believe. And people are talking about it, and I want to go and find one. Because I would love to make a blanket for two of my sisters. <clears throat> for Because um, I'm hoping they'll come visit me this summer. And if they get a chance, or this spring actually, before hot summer hits. And I would love to make them both a blanket so they can take it home. Something that I made, more, more like a throw. And I saw that yarn, and I thought, oh, that would be awesome. And so I'm on a hunt. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I was told that it was at Walmart, and you get enough on one roll to make a blanket, so we'll see. And if I find them, I'll tell you about them, and I'll show it to you, alrighty? Alright, so we had a lot of fun. We talked about a lot of things, a lot of yarn, and so I'm going to let you go. But the last thing I'm going to say is, don't forget, next week we're going to reveal the winner of the Mystery Box Giveaway. And also, I have a surprise I'm going to show you next week. Something my son and I have been working on together. And it's going to be something that's going to go in this box as well. And every giveaway through the month of 2020 is going to get one of these also. And I'm so excited. I will show that to you next week. So be sure and pop in for next week's video. You'll be able uh, to see that. And, huh, I popped off for a second. I hope I didn't lose you. But anyway, <clears throat> you'll be able to see what that is, what we're going to be giving away. And the winner will be announced next week as well. <laughs> I just love giving stuff away. It's just so much fun. All right. So now um, the last thing I want to say is thank you for being a part of Posh Pooch Designs watching Sarah Satch's videos, which is me. <laughs> and be sure and give us a like and a subscribe. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I'll see you next week.